San Antonio starts right now. Flames 20 feet in the air overnight near the downtown area. What we know about this fire. Plus, crews in Medina County still monitoring the wildfire near the Medina Lake area. The latest on that situation in just a few minutes. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, 56 degrees to start your Sunday morning. What does the rest of the day look like? What does the work week look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Until then, good morning. It is 6 o'clock this Sunday, March 27th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Good morning. Did you make it outside yesterday? We spent all day outside yesterday. Nice. Big hat. Big hat. Uh, the SPF. You wore it. The long sleeves. The long sleeves. Okay. Yes. Uh, sunscreen. Mm -hmm. uh, like the shellac sunscreen. Like You're 70. hiding from the sun. Yeah, because I don't want the wrinkles or the mm. skin cancer. Did you upgrade the garden? I did. It, I've been behind. Mm. Uh, so I planted a lot of seeds. Uh, we had a late freeze, so haven't been able to do some upkeep so it was it felt like spring yesterday and I had to work on it a late freeze and it's been dry guys we just so have dry. not seen a good amount of rain this month or for the year in fact and I'm sure as you were looking west you saw the big plume of smoke from the Medina County fire of course that is something that is going to continue to be an issue uh, today so don't be surprised if in San Antonio you see that smoke plume and then closer to Medina Lake of course feeling the impacts more directly outside right now in San Antonio, it is cool. It's 55 degrees, 55 in New Braunfels, 54 in Seguin, 57 in Bernie Stage Airfield, 47 in Rio Medina, 48 in Castroville, and it's 57 in Kerrville. But much like yesterday, we're quickly going to warm up today under abundant sunshine. Expect a high temperature near 90. It'll be 87 in New Braunfels, 89 in Port SA, 90 in Castroville, 87 in Kerrville, 86 in Bernie, and 90 in Bandera. Of course, there is a red flag warning in effect until 8 p.m. as grass fires can start easily. And as we've been seeing yet since yesterday and Friday night really spread very rapidly. There's a fire uh, just to the southeast of Kerrville. And then, of course, that big Medina County fire there just south of Medina Lake. And coming up in the forecast, I'm going to show you where that smoke plume will, will be headed and which areas are going to be most directly impacted by the smoke plume from that fire are coming up in just a few minutes. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, arson investigators are working to figure out how a fire started that filled the property just east of Southtown with flames. So take a look. This was a situation just before midnight on Delaware Street near I-37. Firefighters on the scene telling us the flames out there were up to 20 feet in the air. The fire was so bad that building actually collapsed. Right now, no injuries were reported. We're still waiting to learn how exactly this all started. Also new this morning, one person is dead and two others are in the hospital after a head-on crash near South Flores East and East Dickinson Avenue. Police say just after midnight, a driver was headed southbound on South Flores, veered into the northbound lanes and crashed into the SUV head-on. Two women were in that SUV. We are told the driver died on impact and the passenger was taken to Bamsey in stable condition. As for the wrong way driver who allegedly caused this crash, he was rescued via the, the jaws of life and was also taken to Bamsey in critical condition. Police believe speed and alcohol were a factor. The driver will be evaluated at the hospital for DWI and we are still waiting to learn what charges he could face. Now to the latest in the fire that Sarah was talking about. Brush fires we're monitoring right now on Das Goat Fire in Medina County. Over 950 acres burned, 20% contained at this time. Now there's another fire in Kerr County with 160 acres burning and 80% contained. West Oak Fire in Gillespie County, 50 acres burned, 70% contained. And we're getting this all from the Texas Wildlife Incident Response System public viewer webpage. And that was what was just on your screen. The massive fire burning in Medina County, forcing people to evacuate their homes again. Like Sarah just said, right now the Das Goats fire is only 20% contained. Most mandatory evacuations have been lifted, except for those who live on County Road 2615. That's between County Road 265 to just the south part of Paradise Canyon. That includes the High Mountain Ranch subdivision. Now, the Texas Forest Service says it is so important that people be ready to leave at a moment's notice. It is moving pretty rapidly and um, it, it is a serious threat. When that comes, they will be asked to leave immediately. They want everyone to get in their vehicles and go. 
Winds are expected to pick up once again today. The Medina County Office of Emergency Management is asking people who live in that area to be on high alert. And in just a few minutes, Sarah Spivey is going to join us and show us where some of these smoke plumes from this fire are likely to head and what areas could be impacted. Now over in Kerr County, firefighters are dealing with another wildfire. It's at 80% contained according to the Texas Forest Service. This fire happening between Comfort and the center point east of Kerrville. According to the Kerr County Sheriff's Office, a barn and two stock trailers have been destroyed by this fire, but no injuries have been reported. As of now, no evacuations have been issued for this area. Other top stories we're following this morning. A man has been arrested in connection to the shooting at two children walking home from school in Lacoste. Now, it's a big update to a defender's investigation we first told you about earlier this week. 18-year-old Osbaldo Rodriguez facing a deadly conduct charge. That's a third-degree felony. Now, the shooting happened back on March 8th just outside a home in Lacoste. It's just southeast of Castroville. So the two boys who had been shot at, they had just gotten off the school bus when they were allegedly approached by Rodriguez in a vehicle. Now, the parents of the kids told our KSAT defenders team that Rodriguez allegedly parked in a nearby driveway, and that's when he fired several shots towards the boys. One of those boys then claimed that Rodriguez even tried to run them over with his car. Luckily, neither of those boys were hurt. Now to the latest in Ukraine. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky is emphasizing his country's need for more weapons, especially planes and tanks. And as ABC's Ty Hernandez reports, Zelensky is calling on the West to increase the supply so that Ukraine can continue to defend itself against the Russian forces. As Russia's invasion of Ukraine continues, President Joe Biden with some choice words for Russia's President Vladimir Putin. He's a butcher. Those remarks as two Russian missiles rocked the western Ukrainian city of Lviv, hitting a defense facility and an oil depot. ABC's James Longman is there. This is an oil depot. You can see the flames there burning. The city was meant to be a sanctuary for thousands, and now it feels like the war has come to them. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky continues to stress his country needs more weapons, calling for 1% of NATO's arsenal. Saturday's attacks on Lviv less than 50 miles from Ukraine's border with Poland. President Biden wrapping up his high stakes trip on Saturday, visiting Poland's capital, Warsaw, and sitting down for his first meeting with Ukrainian officials since the Russian invasion began. He also reassured Poland's leaders, saying the U.S. has an obligation under NATO rules to defend its allies. A sacred commitment that relates to every member of NATO. The president spent part of the day meeting with Ukrainian refugees before addressing a large crowd and issuing a warning to Putin. Don't even think about moving on one single inch of NATO territory. Then saying this. For God's sake, this man cannot remain power. The White House later tried to clarify those remarks, saying the president was not calling for a regime change in Russia. Ty Hernandez, ABC News, New York. Time now, 6.08, 55 degrees out. We'll still ahead on GMSA, the latest on when adults over the age of 50 could soon be able to get a second COVID-19 booster shot. And go Spurs go. It was an early game yesterday, four o'clock, and was it exhilarating? That is a dunkaroo right there. A dunkaroo. Yes. Throwback. Love it. We're gonna have highlights from the huge win in just a bit. Good morning and welcome back. Let's start off with a live look outside. 55 degrees, a little warmer than we saw yesterday, Sarah. And I, I'm here for it. I'm okay with that. I think the problem is, Sarah, it's been really dry and it's kind of fueling all those fires we're seeing in our viewing area. Absolutely. And today is another day where we have a red flag warning in effect from 10 to 8 p.m. tonight. And again, dry, gusty conditions are going to spread any fires that start very rapidly. And so again, that red flag warning in effect for all of the KSAT 12 viewing area winds are going to be gusting from the south or from the southwest at 25 to even 30 miles per hour. And as I mentioned, we do have uh, two in intense fires in the KSAT 12 viewing area, one that is uh, rather contained up in Kirk County, but this fire in Medina County continues to rage on. And it's really going to once again 
show a pretty significant smoke plume throughout the day today. Now, while that plume will be visible in San Antonio, it's really going to affect the air quality, of course, for areas around Medina Lake, but also as those winds are from the south southwest up into Bandera County near Pipe Creek, even up into Kendall County near Bernie, a lot like yesterday where folks in Bernie were seeing smoke in the air. That's going to be the case today as well. And then as we head into the afternoon, as winds turn more to the south, areas uh, especially in uh, Bandera County and definitely over the lake and then up even toward Comfort where again we have that other fire just to the west of Comfort are going to be directly impacted by the smoke and then by this evening as the winds uh, turn more to the south southeast we're going to see it uh, impact areas like Kerrville and Bandera proper. So again air quality in San Antonio should be okay but it's the areas that are uh, directly with that smoke plume over them that we'll be seeing ash and smoke as well. By midnight, uh, the smoke will dissipate, but that fire will likely still be raging. So what can you do to avoid any kind of fires, both uh, Yesterday and today, there was red flag warning in effect. No campfires or burn piles. Avoid using any kind of tools that create sparks. Dispose of cigarettes properly and don't drag trailer trains because those can create sparks as well, which can cause grass fires. All right, outside right now, it's cool, but warmer than how we started off the day yesterday. It's 55 in San Antonio, 45 in Hondo, 57 in Kerrville, 55 in New Braunfels, 59 in Kennedy and 61 in Del Rio. A Tighter view here around the metro area. It's 50 in Port SA, 48 in Castroville, 46 in Rio Medina, and it's 57 in Bulverde, 55 in New Braunfels. But again, we're going to see plenty of sunshine today, so it is going to get warm this afternoon. You're going to need uh, a light jacket this morning, but this afternoon, absolutely not. It's going to be warm near 90 degrees. It'll be 90 in Petite, 87 in New Braunfels, 87 in Seguin, 89 in Rio Medina, 90 in Hondo, 86 in Bernie, 88 in Comfort, and 87 in Kerrville. Your KSAT 12 hour forecast calls for winds to be calm this morning, but by the afternoon, they'll really start to pick up. By 10, we'll already be in the 60s, and by noon, we'll be close to 80 degrees, mostly sunny skies. And then look at those winds from the south 10 to 15 miles per hour, gusting up to 20 to 25. We'll be looking at a high temperature near 90 degrees this afternoon, and it's going to be a mild evening. All right, as far as rain chances go, it doesn't look great this week, although there is a small window of opportunity opportunity for a few storms Tuesday night. Most of the severe weather from this system will be up near Abilene, Waco, Dallas, Fort Worth, even north of Austin. That's where scattered severe storms are likely, but there is a small possibility that one or two of those storms around the northern part of San Antonio and even into the hill country could become severe as well with hail possible, but only isolated storm chance in these light pink areas Tuesday night. We'll keep an eye on things again, not anticipating much in the way of rain at all. It's going to be a quick hitting storm system and then out of the area. The biggest thing to be concerned about today, of course, is the grass fire danger. And then tomorrow morning we'll have some patchy fog and it's going to be a warm week ahead. Temperatures will be near 90 degrees just about every day. We'll be right back with more news. Good morning, welcome back, and go Spurs, go. Forgive, but don't forget, the Spurs working to redeem themselves against the Pelicans yesterday, and they got it. They got vengeance. Big win over New Orleans, and they did so even without Devin Vassell and Lonnie Walker. They were out with injuries. It was a little chippy to start, especially when it came to Zach Collins, but here you go. The DeJounte special, defense into offense, and then bang. The Rook making his presence known with the slam. And here we go. Zach Collins again. Beautiful pass. Jock Landell with the dunk. And then, wait, there's more. Beautiful pass. Juke, sidestep, splash. Jock making his presence known too. 58-57 at halftime. It was a close game. And then here we go. Last play, last chance for the Pels. They missed the three. Jock with the rebound. DeJounte running the floor to Keldon, dunk, and that would solidify the win. Spurs win huge 107-103. They now trail the 10th place New Orleans Pelicans by just one game in the final playing spot. It was just good to kind of see it all come together down the stretch, and I think that that's been a consistent theme for us recently is, you know, guys around DJ are starting to step up a little bit and help him carry that load. And, um, you know, that's it's I mean, he's taking it up another notch as well. We just got that little run. Uh, we got stops. We got uh, ran. Uh, you know, we had a bunch of guys 
you know, do their thing and, and uh, was able to get that, that, that lead for us. And we just knew that we couldn't let go. We knew we was playing for something and we got the win. And shout out to DeJounte, another triple-double making Spurs history. So now the Spurs head to Houston, taking on the Rockets tomorrow night, closing out their four-game road trip. Tip-off set for 7 p.m. Look at that. We got a fancy new graphic. I love that. Me too. All right. We got Elite Eight action yesterday. Here are the Saturday games. Here at home in San Antonio at the AT&T Center, Villanova. Ooh, taking care of business when it came to the Cougs, knocking them out of the tournament, 50 to 44. And then Duke, Coach K, on his way to another Final Four. Duke winning big over Arkansas, 78-69. And here we go, big games today. Number one, Kansas taking on the Hurricanes. This is actually the Hurricanes' first time in Elite Eight action. And then, speaking of first, St. Peter's Peacocks. Oh, Peacocks. The first number 15 ranked seed to ever make it to the Elite Eight, and they're taking on UNC. Ooh, who are you rooting for? I don't have a favorite, but I just like to say go Peacocks. Go Peacocks. I'll get you a St. Peter's jersey. <laughs> and you can count on the sports guys covering all these games and so much more tonight on Instant Replay. Make sure to tune in 11 p.m. right after the night beat. Time now, 622, 55 degrees out. Coming up next, the latest on approval for a second COVID-19 booster shot. The decision to give Americans over the age of 50 the option to have a second COVID-19 booster shot could come as early as next week. That's according to the New York Times. The FDA's Vaccine Advisory Committee was expected con to consider the additional booster shot proposal on April 6th. But new data from Israel provides new evidence that a fourth COVID-19 vaccine offers enhanced protection against severe illness. The action by the White House would not amount to an official second booster recommendation, but would give everyone over 50 the option. And speaking of COVID booster shots, the next Metro Health pop-up clinic will be set for Tuesday. If you need to get your COVID vaccine or a flu shot, it'll be at the Las Palmas Branch Library on Castroville Road. It's in a meeting room from noon to 5 p.m. All three vaccines will be available to eligible adults and eligible children. Time now, 626, 55 degrees out. So much more ahead on GMSA, including the heartbreaking stories of the most vulnerable victims in Ukraine. The children will share the story of a young girl who was shot by Russian soldiers as she was trying to flee her country with her mom. And back here at home, taking a live look out at the roadways. 55 degrees out there right now. A few people out on the roadways. If you are out and about, make sure to be smart, drive safe. There are some important closures you have to be aware of this morning. We're going to tell you about that and so much more in just a bit. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Sunday. Just about 6.30 this morning, Sunday, March 27th. Yesterday, here in the city, it was hot. Yeah. It got really hot, but you made it outside. I, oh, it kept when, cool. When it's 90 degrees, mm -hmm. I'm like I'm a, like a lizard in the sun. Yeah, like, I love it. I mean, I cover up, but I love I love the heat. Yeah, the big yeah. hat, the sunglasses. Yeah. Can you explain the the long sleeves for us? Oh my gosh, well, I'm imagine, so enamored by this. I have never, never. Okay, the long sleeve. Mm -hmm. All you South Texan people know what I'm talking okay. about. They're the long sleeve shirts that come with SPF. You get them at Academy. Okay, so it's like a very thin shirt that keeps you safe. Yeah, it's a, okay. it keeps you cool oh. and it protects you from the sun. Yeah, guys, we got up to 91 degrees yesterday. That is the hottest we've been since October 10th. So, yeah, it was definitely warm uh, yesterday. And today will be a couple of degrees cooler than that, but it's still going to be warm in the afternoon. Let's take a look outside right now with live cam. It is cool. It's 55 degrees. Uh, around San Antonio, the biggest thing you'll notice is that uh, it's going to be a quick warm-up today. In fact, by the afternoon, we'll be in the upper 80s. 89 Port S.A., 87 in Converse, 86 in Verde, 89 in Stinson, 90 in Petite, 90 in Bandera, and 87 in Kerrville. But this was a common common uh, view yesterday around San Antonio and it's going to be a common view today too. This is out at Woodlawn Lake and you can see looking west the ginormous and the gigantic smoke plume from the Medina County fire. And for most people in San Antonio, this is about as, as close as it looked to the fire with that smoke plume there on the horizon. But in other areas like out toward Bernie, this is a picture sent into our KSAC Connect feature from Sergio. This is in Bernie and you can see 
see that the smoke plume is actually really impacting the air quality there. There was some ash falling in Bernie as well. And coming up in the forecast, that, that fire, that Medina County fire is expected to rage on today. And so there is high fire danger all throughout the KSAT 12 viewing area. And coming up in the forecast, I'm going to show you that smoke plume forecast, which areas are going to be most directly impacted by the smoke plume from the Medina County fire. And we'll talk also talk about a small shot at rain that we have this week and in, in the coming days. So a lot to unpack in the forecast. Thank you for those pictures on our KSAT Connect feature. You can send them into our app and we like to show them on air. Really helps us get an idea of what's going on at the ground. And again, that smoke plume forecast in just a few minutes. Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, a fight on the east side ends in gunfire, and now one man is in the hospital. Investigators are still looking for the person who was responsible. Police say there was some sort of argument on the city's east side just after 2 a.m., and one man involved was shot multiple times. A woman he was with drove him downtown to try to get to the hospital, and when they reached Commerce in Navarro, they were able to get some help. The gunshot victim was taken to BAMC in critical condition. Right now, investigators are working to figure out where the shoot shooting happened and who pulled the trigger. Now to a traffic alert that you need to be aware of on the city's west side. Text that will have a full closure of Loop 410 near Marbach Road starting in just about 30 minutes. The closure will be for utility work in the area. Traffic will be stopped intermittently throughout the day in 15 minute intervals starting at 7 a.m. and going to 4 p.m. today. Now, drivers should expect delays in that area or try to find other ways around it. You can find the latest traffic information on KSAT.com. You can just scan the QR code on your screen right there and it'll take you right to the link. Now the devastating situation in Ukraine as the war intensifies is taking a toll on some of the most innocent and vulnerable victims. We're talking about children. CNN's Ivan Watson visited a ward at a children's hospital where many are injured and receiving medical care. He had a chance to speak with some of the staff and children, including a little girl who was wounded by a Russian soldier. Take a look. 11-year-old Milena Uralova lies in a hospital, recovering nine days after a Russian soldier shot her through the face. Horribly wounded, and yet quick to show off how she can count in English. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. She can't speak loudly, her mother Elena explains. She has a bullet wound to her jaw and the base of her tongue, she says. The bullet was lodged in her throat near her carotid artery. Milena uh, does gymnastics. She's going to show me a couple of videos. This was Milena before Russia invaded Ukraine. Flipping and dancing. But now she can barely walk. We met Milena here in a makeshift bomb shelter in the basement of a children's hospital. The nurses here say that six or seven times a day and night, due to air raid sirens, they have to bring these newborns who all have medical complications in and out of this room for hours at a time for their safety. The windows protected by sandbags. On March 16th, Ilena, her two daughters and mother-in-law fled from the Ukrainian port city of Mariupol after enduring weeks of Russian bombardment, jumping into the back of a car with two strangers to escape. They navigated many Russian military checkpoints and then at around noon, Ilena says, they made a turn towards the town of Vasilivka and stumbled across Russian soldiers who opened fire on the car without warning. We started turning, and that's when they started firing at us from submachine guns. After that, of course, the driver stopped. We started opening our doors, walking out with our hands up, after which they were shouting something. We did not know what, and that is when we saw what happened to my daughter, the younger one. We took her out of the car as she was wounded. Her mother says, realizing their mistake, the Russian soldiers gave her daughter first aid and sent her to a nearby hospital in the Russian-occupied town of Tokmak. A Red Cross vehicle later brought her to this hospital for life-saving surgery. The hospital has treated nine wounded children in the last two weeks. What injuries are you seeing now? Different injuries, different trauma. It's 
head trauma, it's uh, amputation, traumatic amputation, it's uh, um, bullets trauma. Now Dr. Ivan Anikin says Milena is now stable and will live, hopefully without long-term physical disabilities. But she has not so good psychological uh, status. She worries, she cries, she afraid uh, different sounds. Milena's mother has a message for the Russian soldiers who shot her daughter. Go back home. Why are they here? They are mercenaries who don't care about us. Don't care about the situation in this country or this war. They don't care who they are shooting at. As for Milena, she shows photos of her cats, Musia and Busia, and looks forward to one day going back to doing gymnastics. Ivan Watson, CNN, Zaporizhia, Ukraine. Really such an incredible story. If you would like to help those suffering in Ukraine, the local nonprofit Ukrainian San Antonio will be hosting a medical supplies drive later this week. It will be on Thursday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Hilton Garden Inn at the Rim. To see the full list of medical supplies needed, you can visit ukrainiansanantonio.com. Well, for more than 40 years, economic leaders of San Antonio have taken an annual trip to Washington, D.C. They do so to advocate on behalf of the Alamo City. Local leaders say it's the best way to influence our members of Congress, administration officials, and leaders at the Pentagon. They try to help shape funding decisions and shape the direction of policy by meeting these leaders face to face. The SA to D.C. trip is set for today, and we are set to speak with one of the leaders of the trip later this morning. On leading SA at 8 a.m., President and CEO of the San Antonio Chamber of Commerce, Richard Pettis, set to join us live to talk about the goals of the trip, conversations he expects to have, and the current state of our local economy. If you have any questions you would like to ask, you can submit them right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com, then join us today at 8 a.m. for the full conversation. Time now, 638, 55 degrees out. We'll still head on GMSA. The Oscars are tonight, and the Film Academy is hoping to have everything, quote, back to normal. After two years away due to the pandemic, we'll have a preview later in the show. How many cups of coffee do you have a day? Um, I have three espresso shots okay. just to start the morning. Just, <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're a coffee drinker out there, possibly great news. A new study showing possible health benefits of drinking coffee. We're going to explain in just a bit. So you could say I'm extra healthy. Yeah, immortal <laughs> at this point. <laughs> immortal. All right, 55 degrees at 639 this morning. Still dealing with those dry conditions, according to Sarah Spivey. She'll have our Sunday forecast when we come back. It's going to be another great day to get outside for Cyclovia later this morning. The event is returning this year and a chance for you and your family and pets to get outside and play in the streets, exercise, explore without having to worry about traffic. I love this event. So it's going to be in Southtown and it's going to be routed through some roads and some roads are going to be closed, including South Flores, HEB. It's what's we're going to, it's going to start to Roosevelt Park. The streets will be closed off from 10 this morning to 2 p.m. today. All right, Sarah Spivey, is it going to be a good day to head out there? Yeah, in San Antonio, you know, but you will see the smoke plume from the Medina County fire off in the distance there. But otherwise, it's going to be warm and pretty sunny outside. So around San Antonio, all right. But I do want to just bring the attention to the fact that there is a red flag warning again today until 8 p.m. as very gusty and dry conditions will lead to grass fires spreading rapidly. Notice that all of the KSAT 12 viewing area is under that red flag warning. Let's do our part to avoid spreading grass fires and creating grass fires. And speaking of grass fires, there are two in the San Antonio area and metro area that we need to talk about. One in uh, Eastern Kirk County that is 80% contained, but of course the big one is the one in Medina County, just south of Medina Lake. Only 20% contained in nearly a thousand acres have been lost. This smoke plume will be visible from San Antonio, but much like yesterday, it's going to directly impact areas uh, from Medina Lake up toward Pipe Creek and out toward Bernie. The smoke plume, you'll see the smoke plume, maybe even some ash falling as well up toward Bernie through about lunch. And then as winds turn to uh, the south, more to the south rather than the southwest, it'll start to really impact the comfort area uh, by 3 p.m. And notice that, of course, near Medina Lake and Pipe Creek, 
streak. It's going to stay smoky all day long. And then by the later afternoon hours, as the winds turn slightly more to the southeast, that smoke plume is going to affect the Kerrville area. And again, of course, Bandera, Pipe Creek, Man Medina Lake, those areas as well. That smoke plume will dissipate slightly by midnight, but of course, firefighters are still going to have their hands very full with that Medina Lake fire, and we're going to have crews out there throughout the day today. Winds are going to be gusting up to about 20, 25 miles per hour, uh, mainly throughout the day today, but even into the evening hours. And so that's why once fires get started, they're going to be difficult to contain. Outside right now, though, around San Antonio, it is pretty cool. It's 55 degrees. Winds are calm and dew points are actually on the rise as we speak. But uh, just know that it, you might need the light jacket early this morning, but you won't this afternoon as it's going to be another warm day for us. 57 in Kerrville, 45 in Hondo, 48 in Castroville, 57 in Converse, 55 in Bandera. It's uh, 51 in Bandera rather and 58 in Los Maples. Your KSAT 12 hour forecast calls for a very rapid warm up today. We'll already be in the 60s by 10, mostly sunny skies. Winds are generally calm right now, but notice how they pick up throughout the day. Winds be, uh, becoming southerly in the afternoon, 10 to 15, gusting up to 25 miles per hour. By lunch, it'll be 78 degrees, so it's going to start to get warm around lunch. And then into the afternoon, it'll be warm. Temperatures will be close to 90 degrees, 4 p.m., 5 p.m., and it's going to be a mild evening tonight, too, if you have Sunday night plans. All in all, a very warm and sunny day, and throughout San Antonio, you'll be seeing that smoke plume from that Medina County fire. It will not impact the air quality around San Antonio, but as I showed you earlier, uh, it will impact the air quality for areas uh, around Medina Lake, Bandera, Bernie, and up toward Comfort. All right, across the nation right now, fairly quiet. There is a bit of snow across the central plains. High pressure system maintaining its dominance over San Antonio. But an approaching low is going to bring us a brief shot at rain Tuesday night. Now, it doesn't look great as far as rainfall is concerned, but Tuesday night into Wednesday morning, we're going to be monitoring for a few thunderstorms uh, early in the morning hours of Wednesday, but most of the rain will be up near the Dallas Fort Worth area and up into Oklahoma. So again, not ideal for us as we are struggling from drought conditions as is evident by the dry and gusty winds out there today. By tomorrow morning, some fog, 85 degrees tomorrow in the afternoon. Morning clouds on Tuesday, a little bit cooler because of those morning clouds, but still warm in the afternoon on Tuesday. Then behind that system on Tuesday night to Wednesday, it's going to be very windy. Winds are going to be gusting up to 40 miles per hour on Wednesday. As we start Fiesta on Thursday, it's going to be warm too, near 90 degrees. All in all, a warm and windy week ahead for us in San Antonio. Max and Sarah. All right. Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 647, 54 degrees out. Look at what's coming up next. But we are just hours away from Hollywood's biggest night. I'm Morgan Norwood, and I'll have the very latest from the red carpet coming up. Take a look at those ladder numbers. Pick three, three, zero, two, fireball nine, daily four, zero, seven, three, nine, fireball seven. Cash 5, 14, 20, 26, 30, 32. Texas Lotto, 12, 13, 24, 30, 31, 42. Here's that big up to 181 million. Oh, did you play? I didn't play. I forgot ah. to get a ticket, but I don't know if there's a winner. Okay. I'll look it up after this. 2, 10, 50, 59, 61, Powerball 6, Power Play 3. 180 mil? Yep. Ooh. All right, here's some good news for coffee drinkers, a.k.a. here on GMSA. A new study shows drinking coffee may help your heart. So according to research published this week, having two or three cups of oh. coffee per day appears to lower a person's chance of falling victim to heart disease and heart failure. The findings were based on data from UK, which included information on more than half a million people during a 10 year period. Researchers say they're not sure if caffeine is the main factor for the apparent health benefits, saying there are numerous other compounds in coffee that could play a role. Maybe because like you're just so caffeinated and active. Mm, that could be it. Yeah. All right, for the first time in two years, the Academy Awards are rolling out the red carpet in Los Angeles for what Film Academy hopes to be a back to normal Oscar. And you can watch it right here on KSAT 12 this evening. ABC's Morgan Norwood is in Los Angeles with a preview of tonight's big show. The final setup is underway at the Dolby Theater with just hours until Hollywood's biggest night. 
And after three years with no MC, it's triple the host for this year's Academy Awards. Amy Schumer, Wanda Sykes, and Regina Hall. It's also really a treat because I love Amy and I love Wanda. With Will Packer at the helm, producers once again striving to keep the program moving swiftly. But it comes at the cost of eight key categories that won't be announced in the live broadcast. This has not been well received from artisans that work in the industry, feel like they're getting shortchanged. However, Will Packer, ABC and the Academy have ensured that they will have their moment. Now I need mind you saying we hard on these kids. You know why? Because we are. Nominees favored to get that call for the sprint to the stage include Will Smith for Best Actor, with Troy Kotzer, the favorite for Supporting Actor. Kotzer, the second deaf actor to be nominated for an Academy Award for CODA. Marley Matlin, who also also stars in the film was the first. I feel so honored to be here and to be recognized as a nominee because this is making history. And as for Best Actress? Best Actress is the most wide open category of the night. You have two non-winners in the category, Jessica Chastain for The Eyes of Tammy Faye. On her third nomination, she's never won before. And Kristen Stewart, who plays Princess Diana and Spencer, both are very competitive in this race. And just before the broadcast begins, the Academy will present eight awards that will be edited into what producers have promised will be a tight three-hour show. Morgan Norwood, ABC News, Hollywood. All right, Fiesta Parades are finally making a comeback this year. And we have a special offer just for our KSAT viewers, so you can get tickets to exclusive viewing parties. For tickets and more information on how you can celebrate Fiesta with us, just scan this QR code on your screen right now. You could watch the Battle of Flowers or Fiesta Flambeau parades in a private area in mm -hmm. Crockett Park and meet some KSAT journalists. I know Sarah Spivey, myself, and Max Massey will be out there at some point through uh, those events. And here you go, another QR code that you can scan right there on your screen. We're talking Fiesta. And you can find a full list of the Fiesta events and the parades. Remember, it begins Thursday and it ends on April 10th. Time now, just about 6.55, 55 degrees out. We'll be right back. And the news you need to know before you go, arson investigators are working to figure out what started a fire that filled a home just east of Southtown with flames. This was just before midnight on Delaware Street near I-37. Firefighters on scene tell us flames were up to 20 feet in the air. The fire was so bad the house collapsed. Right now, no injuries reported at this time. We're still waiting to learn exactly how this started. One person dead, two others in the hospital after a head-on crash near South Flores and East Dickinson Avenue. So this is what we know right now. Police say this happened just after midnight. A driver headed southbound on South Flores, veered onto the northbound lanes, crashed into an SUV head-on. Two women were in that SUV. We're told the driver died on impact. The passenger taken to Bamsey in stable condition as for the wrong way driver who allegedly caused this crash. He was rescued via the jaws of life. Also taken to Bamsey. He is in critical condition. Police do believe speed and alcohol played a factor. It's chilly out there early this morning. It's 51 degrees, but look how quickly we warm up today. By noon, we'll be close to 80, and in the afternoon, 88 degrees for the high temperature. It's also going to be windy today, too. Winds from the south-southwest 10 to 15, gusting up to 20. The combination of dry, windy conditions is going to really aggravate any grass fires that are out there, including that Medina County fire. And uh, there is a red flag warning until 8 p.m. because of high fire danger today. Now, looking at ahead tomorrow we'll have some morning fog and 85 degrees tomorrow afternoon morning clouds on Tuesday a little bit cooler because of those morning clouds a small shot at rain Tuesday night but don't bank on much it's really not going to help out the drought conditions and then it'll be windy Wednesday with gusts up to 40 miles per hour all in all a warm week as we start fiesta by the end of the week thank you Sarah Sarah Spivey, thank you. Sarah Costa, thank you. Thank you for watching. We're going to take an hour-long break for Good Morning America, but we're going to be back here at 8 a.m. We have a lot to talk about. We're continuing to follow all of the fires going on in and around our area, and also we have Leading SA. We're going to be talking about the SA to D.C. trip, some of the key conversations that should happen in Washington, D.C. See you at 8. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Flames filling a property overnight. We have the latest from investigators on what happened and what's next. 
We have the latest on a deadly head on crash that happened overnight. Those details in just a bit. And a quick live look out at the Alamo City 53 degrees to start your Sunday morning. A lot going on in around San Antonio. We're going to have your full forecast in just a few moments. But for now, 8 o'clock this Sunday, March 27th. And we'll get to those top stories in just a bit and check in with Sarah Spivey in a moment. But first, the latest on the fire in Medina County. So the fire forcing people to evacuate their homes again. Right now, the Das Goat Fire is just 20% contained. It's burned more than 950 acres. Most mandatory evacuations have been lifted at this time, except for those who live between County Road 265 and just south of Paradise Canyon, including the High Mountain Ranch subdivision. Texas Forest Service says it is vital that people in that area be ready to be leave at a moment's notice. It is moving pretty rapidly and um, it, it is a serious threat. When that comes, they will be asked to leave immediately. They want everyone to get in their vehicles and go. Winds are expected to pick up again today. The Medina County Office of Emergency Management is asking people living here to be on alert. And Sarah Spivey joins us now with a look at where those smoke plumes from this fire could be heading and who could it affect, Sarah? Yeah, thank you guys. You know, the smoke plume will be visible from San Antonio all day. You look to the west and to the north, you will be able to see the smoke plume, but it'll directly impact areas uh, as the winds head from the southwest from Medina Lake up toward Pipe Creek, even the extreme northwest corner of Bear County and up into Bernie through about lunch. And then as winds turn a little bit more to the south, you'll see it, especially in the Pipe Creek Medina Lake area, but also in Cumberland by the afternoon hours and this within this plume is where you could see some falling ash and some reduced air quality. Then as we head into the later afternoon and early evening hours as those winds shift more to the south southeast Bandera proper and up toward Kerrville will be affected by that smoke plume as well. That smoke plume will dissipate slightly closer to midnight, but firefighters are going to be fighting that blaze uh, throughout the day today and even into Monday as as well and as we just mentioned those winds are going to pick up and so a red flag warning is in effect for all of the counties you see here in pink the entire case at 12 viewing area fires that start will spread rapidly because of very dry and gusty conditions so we need to do our part today to avoid any kind of outdoor burning and to avoid creating sparks of any kind now temperatures out there this morning are on the cool side we're at 51 at the airport 48 port sa 45 Rio Medina, 55 in Kerrville, 51 in New Braunfels, and 50 in Seguin. But we're in for another huge temperature swing today. At 546, we recorded a low of 49 degrees. But by this afternoon, 88 for the forecast high. That is a 39 degree temperature swing. So even though you need a light jacket early this morning, by this afternoon, it's going to be toasty. Another look at that smoke plume forecast and whether or not we could see any rain in the week ahead in just a few minutes. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Medina Valley ISD has announced that they are opening up Loma Alta Middle School as an evacuation center for residents affected by the fire. The school is on County Road 381. Residents are asked to enter through the gym again. This evacuation center will be for the Medina County residents at Loma Alta Middle School. Well, firefighters in Kerr County also dealing with their own wildfire. This one about 80% contained. It has burned about 160 acres. This latest information coming in from the Texas Forest Service. So the forest, the fire is between Comfort and Center Point. It's just east of Kerrville. So according to the Kerr County Sheriff's Office, a barn and two stock trailers have been destroyed. No injuries reported. As of now, no evacuations have been issued for the area. Other news this morning, arson investigators are working to figure out what started a fire that filled a home just east of Southtown. Take a look at this was the situation but just before midnight on Delaware Street near I-37. Firefighters on scene tell us flames were up to 20 feet in the air. The fire was so bad the house collapsed. Right now, no injuries have been reported at this time, and we are still waiting to learn exactly what led up to it. One person dead, two others in the hospital after a head on crash near South Flores and East Dickinson Avenue. Police on the scene telling us this happened just after midnight. A driver was headed southbound on South Flores. They veered onto the on the northbound lanes. They crashed into an SUV head on two women in that SUV. 
Now, we're told the driver died on impact. The passenger taken to Bamsey in stable condition. As for the wrong way driver, the person who allegedly caused this crash, he was rescued via the jaws of life. Also taken to Bamsey, he is in critical condition. Police do believe speed and alcohol may have played a factor. The driver will be evaluated at the hospital for a DWI, and we are still waiting to learn what charges he could be facing. Well, local leaders say SA to DC is the best way to influence our members of Congress, administration officials, and leaders of the Pentagon. A group of local leaders head to our nation's capital to help shape funding decisions and help shape the direction of policy, meeting lawmakers face to face. So joining us in today's leading SA segment is President and CEO of the San Antonio Chamber of Commerce, Richard Bettis. Now, Richard, I understand you're joining us from DC already. I am, Sarah. Good morning. Good, Good morning, morning, Max. We're here and we're working it already. Good morning. So what are your goals for the trip? Well, the goals are to bring resources to San Antonio. You know, San Antonio, as you all well know, is the seventh largest city in the nation. We have needs just like any other city. We pay taxes just like every other city. And so we want to bring some of those resources back to San Antonio, leveraging the projects that are happening now to make that money go that much further. So what are any specific plans that you're going to that you guys want to discuss with the lawmakers face to face? Well, sir, military affairs is always a big issue. As you know, we're Military City USA. We have the largest military footprint of any city in the country. So making sure that our men and women in uniform have the resources that they need to carry out their missions, but not just the person that's in the uniform, but their families. Increasingly, when the uh, Department of Defense scores a community on the, the whether it's a good place for more military missions to uh, be located, they look at things like child care. They look at things like health care. They look at the school systems for uh, the children of the military people. And those are the things that increasingly are just as important as any other uh, infrastructure, if you will. So making sure that we are um, investing dollars in families, big, big deal. And we want to learn more. And we also want to tell the story of the fact that we are doing a good job in that area. What about transportation? Transportation is huge. And in fact, there is, you know, the bipartisan infrastructure bill that was signed by the president a few months ago. Those monies are now being uh, the scheme for getting them out to communities is being developed now. And we want to tell the story of San Antonio. And that is we have a one point two billion dollar bond that we're all going to vote for in May. And I'm very hopeful that it'll pass. We can use that bond to leverage additional federal dollars to come to San Antonio for roads. As we know, potholes and streets are one of the biggest issues in San Antonio and then parks. And so we want to focus a lot of time, effort and energy on those projects that we already have in the hopper, show the federal government and then make those dollars go that much further. So, Richard, what successes have you guys seen from these past face to face meetings? Well, Sarah, let me tell you that SA to DC is a it's a slog. So the issues that we um, advocate for today we won't be able to see the fruits of our labor for years to come. So, for example, the uh, federal courthouse, we advocated for about seven years. The federal courthouse funding for the federal courthouse was on our essay to D.C. Finally, in 2020, we got the final twenty six million dollars necessary to complete the entire one hundred and twenty million dollars for the entire project. So slowly but surely, we kept advocating. And Senator Cornyn and uh, Congressman Henry Cuellar were the two tips of the spear that helped us get that money. So. Um, if we don't come back on Wednesday with a check in our hand, I can assure you that we're putting a good down payment to make that check happen when we come uh, in previous in, in later in years later. And speaking of down payments, obviously the last couple of years have been so tough for so many families in and around San Antonio. How do you categorize the state of our local economy? And you know what do you think is most needed to help continue the economic growth we've seen? Well, we certainly need to continue to keep our eye on COVID and making sure that we're uh, vaccinated and doing all we can to be safe. Uh, that's number one. Number two, we are on a very positive trajectory in San Antonio. The economy is looking better every single day. Uh, people are getting excited to be back to work and doing the things that we all are so used to. Fiesta's right around the corner. So I think we're in an upward trajectory. We just need to keep our eye on the ball. We need to be thoughtful. You know, the violence and the, the war in Ukraine certainly has an effect. There's still issues with supply chain. Uh, uh, and so all those things are still out there. And so we just need to keep working, be positive, work together uh, and, you know, be a united city. Well, Richard Bettis with the San Antonio Chamber of Commerce, thank you so much for joining us. We wish you guys luck in D.C. for the next couple of days. Thank you. Thanks very much. Good seeing you all.
Time now, 8-10, 53 degrees out. Those first go. Oh my goodness, what a game, what a finish. We're going to have all the highlights and what you need to know when it comes to the playoffs. It's time to get out and play in the streets, how you and your family can get on the bikes, bring the kids, bring the pets, and get outdoors for today's Ciclovia event happening in the Southtown area. We have all those details coming up. And what a perfect day to head out there. 53 degrees now. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey for your full forecast. It's one of my favorite events that happens here in San Antonio, Ciclovia. It's happening today in the Southtown area. Time to get out with your family and play in the streets, ride your bikes, uh, you know, get your pets out, go for a walk. And it's all free of traffic because they're going to be closing down the roads mm -hmm. uh, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. in the Southtown area. The route will have the roads closed from the HEB on South Flores back to Roosevelt Park. And Sarah, is it going to be a nice day to get out there it and play? It will. It will. It's going to feel very spring-like out there. As Although it's cold right now or chilly right now, at least temperatures are going to warm up nicely into the upper 80s for the high. And so Ciclovia should be pretty nice. But I want to take a look outside right now. This camera is looking west, and you can see the plume of smoke there from the uh, Medina County fire. I'll point it out here for you in a second. There it is. Right there, that's that plume of smoke from that Medina County fire. And, and throughout the day today, the, the plume of smoke is going to be visible from San Antonio, but it's really going to impact areas uh, to the direct north and east of the fire itself. And what I mean by impact is air quality will be impacted, and you may even see some ash falling uh, through lunch in areas as far northeast as Bernie, and even possibly into the Fair Oaks Ranch area as well near Pipe Creek. And then as as those winds turn more to the south instead of the southwest, uh, comfort area will be really impacted by that smoke plume as well. A pipe creep and Medina Lake all day going to be impacted by that. And then by the later afternoon and early evening hours as winds turn slightly to the south southeast, Bandera, Kerrville, those areas will be impacted by that smoke plume as far as air quality goes. Air quality in San Antonio should remain okay. Again, it's those areas that I just mentioned that will be seeing the smoke plume directly above them uh, where they could see some ash. And then uh, firefighters are going to be out there all day fighting that blaze. Now, a red flag warning is in effect for all of the KSAT 12 viewing area until 8 p.m. tonight as dry, gusty wind conditions are going to spread any fires rapidly. And of course, monitoring that fire in Medina County, but then there's also one up in Kerr County just to the west of Comfort. So what can you do to prevent a fire today? First of all, no campfires or burn piles. Avoid using any kind of tools that create sparks, chainsaws and the like. Dispose of cigarettes properly and don't drag trailer chains because those do create sparks, which could eventually lead to fires. As I mentioned, it's cool out there right now. It's 51 in New Bromp 55 in Kerrville, 58 in Del Rio, 52 in Eagle Pass. And a closer view here, it's 43 in Hondo, 45 in Rio Medina, 56 in Converse, 52 in Seguin, and 54 in Bernie. Temperatures, though, today are going to soar because of plenty of sunshine out there. We've got a mix of high thin cirrus clouds out there right now. But in the afternoon, it's going to be warm and mostly sunny. We'll be looking at a high right around 88 in San Antonio, 87 in New Braunfels, 87 in Seguin, 90 in Poteet, 90 in Hondo, 90 in Utopia, 90 in Lost Maples, and 87 in Kerrville. Your KSAT 12-hour forecast calls for that quick warm-up. We'll be in the 70s by 11, so you won't need the jacket after 10 o'clock this morning. Right around lunch, 78 degrees. Notice that winds, which are relatively calm right now, are going to pick up during the day from the south at about 10 to 15, gusting up to 20, 25 miles per hour. In the afternoon, it's going to be warm in the 80s. A high temperature, as I mentioned, right near 88 degrees. And then tonight it's going to be fairly mild and windy as we'll still see those winds from the southeast at about 15 miles per hour. Temperatures will be in the 70s and 60s. We do have a shot at rain this week, but it's not going to bring us much needed healthy rainfall. The storms could move through Tuesday night right before dawn on Wednesday, and some of those will be severe, scattered severe, especially up near Austin, Dallas, Fort Worth, and up into Oklahoma. There is an off chance for an isolated 
expected severe storm as that system moves through Tuesday night around San Antonio, but we'll be keeping an eye on things. And again, the thing that matters rainfall, it's not going to be all that much on Tuesday night into Wednesday. We're really not going to see uh, much. Maybe maybe in some spots a quarter of an inch if you get a shower or thunderstorm, but the rest of us will miss out. Otherwise, it's going to be very windy on Wednesday with gusts up to 40 miles per hour. Tomorrow morning, don't be surprised if you see some morning fog. 85 for the high tomorrow. Clouds Tuesday will keep temperatures a little bit cooler, but still warm in the afternoon. 83 degrees on Tuesday. Again, that front moves through. We see a small shot at rain. The gusty on Wednesday. Fiesta starts on Thursday, and it's going to be near 90 degrees. Hey, Max and Sarah, coming up, I'm going to have a look at some of the pictures around the KSAT 12 viewing area from that smoke plume uh, in, in uh, Medina County. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Time now, 819, 54 degrees out. Let's take a look at these lotto numbers. Pick 3, 302, Fireball 9, Daily 4, 0739, Fireball 7. Cash 5, 14, 20, 26, 30, 32, Lotto, Texas. 12, 13, 24, 30, 31, 42. Here we go. Powerball 2, 10, 50, 59, 61, Powerball 6, Power Play 3. Good luck. We'll be right back. Good morning, welcome back, and go Spurs go. So the last time the Spurs met the Pelicans, it did not go the Spurs way. So yesterday, redemption. Taking on the Pelicans yesterday afternoon, a huge win in New Orleans, and a big win even without Dev Vassell and Lonnie Walker. They're out with injuries. A little chippy to start, and here we go. DeJounte, the DeJounte special defense and offense, and then bang, Josh Primo with the slam. The Rook showing out. And showing up. And then here we go. Beautiful pass underneath. Jock Landell with the dunk. And don't worry, we're going to see him in just a couple. Woo! Can't catch me. That's three. Jock had a night. And wait for it. I got to show you the last play. All right, here we go. With double team CJ, move the ball. Missed three by the Pelicans. Great board. And then got to run the floor. Lock down the win. Spurs locking it down. 107 to 103. One step closer to get in that final playing spot. It was just good to kind of see it all come together down the stretch, and I think that's been a consistent theme for us recently is, you know, guys around DJ are starting to step up a little bit and help him carry that load, and, um, you know, that's, it's, I mean, he's taking it up another notch as well. We just got that little run. Uh, we got stops. We got uh, ran. Uh, you know, we had a bunch of guys. You know, do their thing, and, and uh, was able to get that 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 lead for us. And we just knew that we couldn't let go. We knew we was playing for something, and we got the win. All right, next up, Spurs heading to Houston, taking on the Rockets tomorrow night, closing out a four-game road trip. Tip-off set for 7 p.m. Ah, I love the graphic. It's pretty good. It is pretty good. All right, we got to talk about Elite Eight here at home. We have the AT&T Center rocking. The Cougs could not get it done, losing to Villanova. Fun fact, Villanova actually won a championship here in San Antonio. Hmm. So Villanova will move on. They won 50 to 44. And then Duke, Coach K, getting a huge win, 78 69, so knocking out Arkansas. And of course, the games continue today. The only number one seed left remaining, Kansas, taking on Miami, the Hurricanes, and then Sarah Costa's favorite. Peacocks. Go Peacocks. I don't really know anything about them, just that they're a small up. Jersey school that are really stepping up. The first 15 seed to ever make it to the Elite Eight. Taking on UNC, so we'll see how that will fare. And you can count on the sports guys tonight covering all these games and so much more instant replay. Tune in 11 p.m. right after the night beat. Time now, 825, 55 degrees out. Well, still ahead on GMSA, our sister station, KPRC out of Houston, has a crew in Poland tracking what is happening in the aftermath of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. They join us live with the latest in just a bit. And here at home, a fight on the city's east side ends in gunfire. One man in the hospital this morning. We have the latest information from police coming up right after the break. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Sunday, 8.30 this morning. It is Sunday, March 27th. Thank you so much for joining us. Hopefully you got outside, you got some sunshine yesterday. It was beautiful. I had time to finally work on the garden. Mm -hmm. Now that we had that late freeze, I felt it was a good time to plant some seeds. Lock it in. Yeah, get everything started for spring, Sarah.
Yeah, you know what? You could really use, too, some rain, but mm -hmm. there's just not a good amount of rain in the forecast, and it's been fairly dry since the start of the year, and because of that, I mean, today is another grass fire danger day, another red flag warning in effect because it's dry, warm, and gusty. Let's take a look outside right now with live cam. Some cirrus clouds out there this morning, 51 degrees, so it's on the cool side, and today we're going to quickly warm up so that by this afternoon, it's going to be short sleeves weather. Temperatures are going to be in the upper 80s and even low 90s. 90 in Castroville, 85 in Lotus, 89 Port SA for the high temperature, 87 in Converse, 89 in Nixon, Smiley area, 88 in Comfort, 90 in Bandera, and 87 in Kerrville. Another common sight that you're going to see today, a lot like yesterday, is the smoke plume in San Antonio. You're going to see the smoke plume uh, from the Medina County fire. This is yesterday visible from Woodlawn Lake in San Antonio. You can see that smoke plume very clearly. Now around San Antonio, this is about what the view is going to be today, but closer to that fire and to the north and to the east of that fire, there will be a smoke plume that could even bring some ash to some places like yesterday in Bernie. This picture is sent in through our KSAT Connect feature on our weather app from user Sergio. Thank you. This is in Bernie and you can see that smoke plume moving right over over the, the city there of Bernie. And so I'm going to show you that smoke plume forecast coming up here in a bit. But just to reiterate, high fire danger today. Grass fires that develop will spread rapidly. And uh, again, that smoke plume forecast, I'll show you which areas are going to be most directly impacted by that smoke plume. It's going to be kind of more of a wow factor in San Antonio where we're going to see it. But areas across the hill country will be directly impacted from that smoke plume. Now, we do have a small shot at rain in the week ahead. But before we get our hopes up, uh, I'll tell you the details about that shot at rain and which areas have a chance for even some severe weather are coming up in just a bit. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, a fight on the east side ends in gunfire, and now one man is in the hospital. Investigators are looking for who is responsible. Police say there was some sort of argument on the city's east side just after 2 o'clock this morning, and one man involved was shot multiple times. A woman he was with drove him downtown to try to get him to the hospital, and when they reached Commerce in Navarro, they were able to get some help. The gunshot victim was taken to Bamsey in critical condition right now. Investigators are working to figure out where the shooting happened and who pulled the trigger. A traffic alert you need to be aware of on the city's west side. TxDOT says there is a full closure of Loop 410 near Marbach Road, and it's going on right now. So the closure will be for utility work in the area. Traffic has stopped intermittently throughout the day in 15-minute intervals. It started much earlier this morning. It goes till 4 p.m. today. Now, drivers should expect delays in the area, and they are encouraged to find another way around. You can find the latest traffic information on ksat.com. Just scan the QR code on your screen. It'll take you directly to that information. We continue to learn more about the tragic situation in Ukraine, especially when it comes to the children affected, fleeing from their homes and fleeing with their families. Zach Lashway from our Houston sister station, KPRC, is live in Warsaw with the latest. He's Zach. Hey, Sarah, we're wrapping up our journey right where it began in Warsaw. You know, throughout these past several days, we've traveled all across the country visiting churches churches that are now shelters, shelter for Ukrainian refugees. But not all of these refugees are staying in these shelters. Some are staying at homes with Polish families. In a small three bedroom walk up apartment in Bejestok, Poland. Hello, welcome. Children play, some Polish, some Ukrainian. <laughs> We lived like a family, and I hope they felt like a home. Anya, her husband, their three children, and dog Wall welcomed five Ukrainian refugees. I can't imagine uh, to be in their situation, to pack one bag one day and go. and go. What compelled you to get involved, to help out? If one needs help, the other one should help. It's our duty to help people, yes. We can't stop Putin, yes, obviously. We can't stop war, but we can help people. Vivarda, her husband and three children, fled Ukraine days after Russia invaded, leaving behind their family, new home, and beloved family cat, 
candy. First thing uh, that made them uh, worried was when they could see um, uh, Russian planes, uh, army planes flying very low and it was really uh, threatening. Translating English to Polish is Marzena Snarska. What was the moment they knew they had to get out. As soon and soon they would not have uh, possibility to get food to feed their children. What is their hope? They hope, they understand already that it's not going to be easy, uh, but they hope that Ukraine will be Ukraine, yes. And uh, anyway, they, they've got this hope to come back. Only we're going to know. That's my favorite part right there. Yes, and this is true for so many people. So many people fleeing Ukraine. They just want to go home. They want to go back to Ukraine. This morning we are live in Old Warsaw. This is the town center. You can see thousands of people are here. This is where President Biden addressed the world last night saying Putin cannot remain in power. As we know, the White House was quick to downplay his remarks. Live in Warsaw, I'm Zach Lajway. Back to you. All right. Thank you, Zach. Zach. Well, back here at home today, it's a perfect day to head outside. Why is that, sir? It's Cyclovia. It's one of my favorite events that happens um, every couple. I think it's twice a year in San Antonio, and it's happening in Southtown today starting at 10 o'clock this morning. I know it starts at South Flores at mm -hmm. the HEB there in the downtown area and makes its way to Roosevelt, and they shut down those streets, and you can ride your bike walk, run, bring the pets out, the kids out. It's just so fun to get out and play in the streets. Again, it's happening from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. in the South Town area. Oh, yeah. Good excuse to get outside, get some fresh air, get some sun. Thank you to our photographer, Steven Chavez, giving us a live look out there. Uh, obviously, not much going on right now except for the setup, because like we said, 10 a.m., you can head out there. Streets are closed off for four hours. Also happening today, the Oscars are back after two years away because of the pandemic. The movies that made us think, laugh and cry over the past year with powerful performances and sensational storytelling. ABC's Chris Connolly shares his predictions on who he thinks will take home an Oscar tonight. Denzel Washington is so spectacular, yes, again, in the title role of The Tragedy of Macbeth, this two-time Oscar winner ought to have this category named after him, the Denzels. But his outstanding performance as tennis patriarch Richard Williams in King Richard as Will Smith set to ace best actor like a Serena first serve. Good Power of the Dogs, Benedict Cumberbatch spring a Brit actor upset as Olivia Colman and Anthony Hopkins have done. It's doubtful. It figures to be Will winning the Denzel, um, the Oscar, in straight sets. She was deeply committed to playing the title role in the eyes of Tammy Faye. Why else is Jessica Chastain likely to win Best Actress? Because three of the category's nominees already have Oscars and she does not? Or is it because Chastain was already superb in Interstellar and the revered Tree of Life? A tough match with another nominee playing an icon of that generation, Spencer's Kristen Stewart took great risks to play Princess Diana. This was either going to be great or just awful. It could have gone very bad for me, um, but luckily it's been all right. But unless Penelope Cruz pulls a surprise, Chastain looks Oscar bound. West Side Story's Ariana DeBose for Best Supporting Actress? Absolutely. A fitting way to honor her electrifying performance in the very same role that won Rita Moreno her Oscar 60 years ago. And in supporting actor, there's the people's choice, Troy Kotzer, the first deaf male ever nominated for an acting Academy Award. And there's many deaf kids out there who now feel inspired and hopeful and want to learn where they can train to become actors. And so I feel like I'm passing along the torch from Marley Matlin to myself, and now I'm able to pass it along to the deaf youth. Look for his charismatic vehemence in CODA to put him center stage tonight. Her hand is in every performance and every shot of the power of the dog, making the exceptional Jane Campion, the first woman ever to be nominated twice for Best Director, the likely winner tonight. 
Her film and Kenneth Branagh's Belfast are among the contenders for Best Picture, but they're likely to yield to Coda, first ever winner in this category from a streaming service and an all audiences delight. That was Chris Conley reporting. Time now 840, 56 degrees out. Coming up after the break, Aww. you probably have already seen this or heard about, it, heard about it. Yes, I watched this video, but we're talking about a heartwarming video of a high school student who made this incredible shot and the program that helped make it possible. All right, a quick live look out of the Alamo City, 56 now. We expect a warm up throughout the day. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a bit. Good morning and welcome back. It is the heartwarming story you've probably seen on social media. A lot of people have been talking about it. A blind 11th grader never imagined she'd be creating so much excitement with her basketball skills, but she's now soaking it all up. CNN's Matt Whitco sat down with a Michigan high schooler to talk about the shot and the program that made it happen. After a couple of taps on the backboard, Jules Hoagland takes her shot. A crowd of students from Zealand East and West erupts in excitement. I was like, everyone's staring at me, but I can't see them staring at me, so this is good. <laughs> because Jules is blind, she has help on the hardwood. The girl in the video behind Jules is Allie Guffey. She's my eyes on the court because I don't have my cane, so I have to put my trust in her to make sure she doesn't let me get hit by balls and she guides me in the right direction. The two are inseparable on. Yeah, just make sure that she's all lined up. You can put your left foot forward a little bit. And off the court. I had never met anyone who was blind before, so I knew nothing. She put a lot of trust <laughs> into me. Um, and it just, we had, it was a lot of trial and error, but we have come very, very far. And now we're in a class together for the past two years. They knew each other back in middle school, but the unified sports program made the two grow together almost like sisters. I'm really going to miss you, Holly, and too. I know next year I'm going to feel the same way. This program started several years ago as a chance to make friends. To watch the culture shift of our school community um, really made a difference. And just to be able to watch how that's continued to grow, um, students be accepted, students be shown that they matter and given, an, given a chance um, to really to prove that to the school body. Yep, you got it. You got it. Yep. Then I'll stop. This is Allie's senior year. She's already making plans to see Jules back out on the court. So then like for that to just be like done is like, it's hard to think about because this has been like my family for three years. But I think it's humbling when you realize that those goals are reality and that those are the relationships that now exist in our campus, in our community. You see that excitement there. That was Matt Whitko's reporting. Jewel says before the game, she missed some of her practice shots, but when she scored and during the game when it mattered, she said that she felt like God was there with her. That was so powerful. I love that story. All right. Now to weather, Sarah Spivey, a lot going on. A lot going on. The first thing I want to talk about, guys, is the high fire danger today. You know, you look west and you see that smoke plume from the Medina County fire. And if you are directly north or northeast of that Medina County fire, you can even see ash uh, outside throughout the day. So fire danger is very high today. Red flag warning in effect until 8 p.m. as it is going to be very dry with winds gusting up to 25 to 30 miles per hour from the south and from the south southwest. So high fire danger. A couple of fires to talk about. There's one in eastern Kirk County just to the west of Comfort. This fire is 80% contained, but the fire that is uh, of major, major, major concern is the Medina fire, county fire just south of Medina Lake. This one is only 20% contained and has already burned up to uh, 900 50 plus acres and I want to take you through a smoke plume forecast that smoke plume is going to be visible from San Antonio throughout the day but the areas that it's going to directly affect let's start around lunch so of course Medina Lake all day long going to be directly Im impacted by uh, this smoke plume but right around lunch between about Comfort and Bernie and even as far south as Fair Oaks Ranch that smoke plume is going to be uh, right overhead and so that's where you could see some and then by the early 
afternoon hours. As winds turn to the south, you're going to see a direct impact for the Comfort Area, Pipe Creek, and then, of course, Medina Lake. And then into the later afternoon and evening hours, impacting even the Kerrville and Comfort Area along I-10 there, as well as, of course, Bandera, Pipe Creek, and Medina Lake. That smoke plume will dissipate slightly by midnight, but that fire is likely going to rage into Monday as well. And we'll continue to keep you updated. We've got KSAT crews uh, that have been on the scene in Medina County. Right now outside, you can see mostly clear skies. There are a few thin cirrus out there. It is cool. It's 51 degrees right now. Uh, elsewhere, we've got 56 in a Lotus, 48 at Port SA, 43 in Hondo, 52 in Seguin, 59 in Bernie Stage Airfield, 61 in Kerrville. But with total sunshine today, we're really going to warm up very quickly. In fact, temperatures should be in the 70s and even near 80 degrees by lunch. And then as we head into the afternoon, that's when winds are going to pick up from the south 10 to 15 miles per hour, gusting up to 20, 25 miles per hour. And then uh, it'll get warm in the later half of the afternoon. Highs will be near 90 degrees this afternoon in San Antonio. By the way, we reached 90 yesterday, which is the warmest we've been since October 10th. So another warm day on deck for us today and a mild evening too with temperatures in the 70s. You know what we could really use? Some rain. And we do have a shot at rain in the week ahead, but it's just not a very good chance for healthy rainfall. Take a look at the satellite radar across the nation. Winter is still ongoing across the Great Lakes, but a high pressure system has settled over Texas, and that's what's making it hot and dry. An upper level low, though, is going to approach in from California, and this is going to be our shot at rain Tuesday night into Wednesday. Let's go ahead and take a look at what the future cast shows. Now, again, we're going to be on the tail end of this system Tuesday night into Wednesday, so don't expect much rain in San Antonio. Most of the rain is going to be up near the Dallas Fort Worth and Oklahoma area, but there is that shot at rain 30%. If you do get a shower or storm Tuesday night into Wednesday, maybe up to a quarter of an inch of rainfall, but that's if you're lucky. Otherwise, it's going to be windy on Wednesday behind that system. 40 mile per hour wind gusts are possible on Wednesday. So today, 88 degrees. Tomorrow morning, 55 with some fog in the morning, 85 for the high. Then a few more clouds on Tuesday. Uh, temperatures will be a little bit cooler, but still warm, 83 for the high, then that system moves through. Chance for a few showers and storms uh, with that. And then Fiesta begins on Thursday. It's going to be warm on the day that Fiesta starts, 90 degrees. Hey, coming up, uh, I'll try to see if we have the pollen count in yet. If we don't, of course, it'll be available on ksat.com. Max and Sarah. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 851, 57 degrees out. We'll be right back. Prices on everything seem to be going up, including the cost of pet food and veterinarian care. Coming up tomorrow on GMSA, how you can ease the burden of those costs and which organizations can help you. Our next newscast isn't until 5 this afternoon, but you can still follow the latest on the Medina County Fire on our website. Don't forget to download the KSAT app. Make sure the notifications are on so you can get alerts if you're on the go. And, of course, download our Weather Authority app, too, because they've been giving updates on the conditions out there. All right, it's now 60 degrees in San Antonio, so temperatures are on the rise. We're going to get up to about 88 degrees this afternoon in San Antonio, but elsewhere temperatures will cross cross that 90 degree threshold. As we've been talking about all morning, red flag warning in effect until 8 p.m. Very dry, gusty conditions will spread fires rapidly. And of course, there's those two fires there on your screen, the one in eastern Kirk County and the Medina County fire just south of Medina Lake, which are blazing at the moment. All right, morning fog tomorrow, 85 degrees, some more clouds on Tuesday, a small shot at rain Tuesday night, but it's just not going to be enough, guys, to help us out of the drought conditions. But you can count on us to keep you updated throughout this week. Windy on Wednesday, gusts near 40. All right, Sarah Thank Spivey. You, Sarah. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Are you going to watch the Grammys tonight or the Oscars tonight? Oscars. I will be watching. You can watch them right here on KSAT.